Hello and welcome back to the channel. My name's Dr. James Gill and you've joined me for a clinical skills adjacent video. Recently, I reconsidered my position on the use of cannabidiols, CBD, and I found there is definitely a potential for helping patients in an apparently safe way, particularly when it comes to things like chronic pain. The studies in the USA linking legalization and the availability of CBD with a reduction in opiate related deaths. We discussed that in our previous video. Now, whilst CBD has gained significant attention for its potential therapeutic properties, we've also grown the evidence base as to why the other half of cannabis, the tetrahydrocannabinoid, the THC component, is particularly dangerous, both from an addictive and a mental health perspective. Now, to be completely clear, CBD appears to be safe and it doesn't induce the intoxication or that high feeling, and they are the primary addictive routes for THC. The reason why I start off commenting about addiction here is that addiction can be linked with anxiety, or at least the fact that people are using cannabis because they feel that it improves their anxiety. However, quite frequently, they'll then go on to suffer a rebound of anxiety when they stop using the cannabis because any reduced anxiety effects have disappeared because they've stopped using the cannabis. And that return of their anxiety is compounded by the withdrawal effects because they're no longer getting that THC. So given how well our original video did, looking at the general evidence base of CBD, you can check the link here. Uh, NatureCan asked if I'd do another video investigating the evidence base for CBD use in people with anxiety. And given I see a lot of anxiety in clinic, I mean, in the UK, anxiety has a lifetime prevalence of 24%. You know, one in four people are going to be affected in their lifetime. It makes sense that the commonest reason as a GP, I also encounter people who've been using cannabis, is self-treatment for anxiety. So. I wanted to see if perhaps we could find a way of changing the cannabis that people are using with CBD and whether or not there was an evidence base to support that change. So CBD has been directly studied as an adjunct to treating anxiety. And given its availability without prescription, I thought that looking at this evidence base would be a very sensible plan for another video. Research on the impact of CBD in anxiety management has some positive signals in the literature but everything that I say hereafter must be viewed through the lens that there is a lack of large sample size studies. Bear in mind, the larger the sample size, the more powerful it is, or robust clinical trials in the literature. Neurotherapeutics tried to group a lot of the studies that we have together in a review in 2015, and they did find evidence that CBD gave a benefit for patients with generalized anxiety disorder, social anxiety, and PTSD when the CBD was used in the short term. Unfortunately, they didn't find any comments about CBD um, as a long-term anxiolytic, nor could they comment on what the optimal dose should be. So whilst I was researching this uh, video, there's actually not much evidence on what would be the optimum dosing. And it seems that when CBD is used uh, for anti-anxiety, the dose is been used anywhere between five and 400 milligrams. But I need to highlight, there's no real definitive research on it, but it seems that most studies go to the higher end between two and four to 500 milligrams. That's if you're considering trying using CBD for anxiety at home, which we'll come on to in a minute. Now, as to the how um, CBD might affect uh, anxiety, um, it's thought actually it might have a similar um, evidence base or route to the uh, classic anxiety medications through a modulation of serotonin or perhaps the serotonin receptor. However, that change would also be further impacted by the effect that CBD has an endocannabinoid system, which classical medications don't impact on. Certainly, we can look at that from the inverse in terms of getting um, a a way the medication works. We know that chronic stress does impair signals within the endocannabinoid system in the brain. And that chronic stress and the impaired endocannabinoid system then has been linked with anxiety. So it kind of makes sense that supplementing with CBD seems to be a reasonable therapeutic target. Now, 
I mentioned that you could take studies and combine them to try and improve their power. In 2020, a review looked at 233 scientific publications um, with regard to using CBD for anxiety or anxiety-related disorders, and that was published in the American Pharmacists Association Journal. That demonstrated CBD significantly reduced anxiety scores across a range of different tools. Now, when I say tools, what do I mean? There's lots of different scoring systems you can use to quantify anxiety. Personally, I quite like using the GAD7 score. Um, you can see a, um, a website using it here that I use uh, regularly with patients. It's patient.co.uk. And that allows us to essentially score our anxieties, um, which can look at then if your patient has managed to improve, if they're deteriorating. It just gives a, a concrete way of describing what's going on in the head. And actually, if you suffer with anxiety, it might be worthwhile having a look at the GAD7 score and seeing what numbers you come out with. Maybe you need to speak to your GP if you're concerned about those numbers. If people are getting you know, low level uh, anxiety scores, it might be reasonable to consider starting a low dose um, CBD taken over the counter. We know that from the research in this uh, study that between four, six and 400 milligram doses only had minimal side effects in any of the studies looked at. Again, from personal experience dealing with anxiety, it's very easy to find standard medications that improve a patient's anxiety. We have lots of those. However, it's very often the side effects that result in patients needing to swap to different medications or failure of a particular medication and needing to stop them. Crucially, from a side effect profile, it seems that CBD isn't associated with significant side effects, nor is it associated with anxiety. What? Hold on. Why would I want to be talking about a medication associated with anxiety if we're talking about medications to stop anxiety? That does sound bizarre, but believe it or not, anxiety is one of the commonest side effects, not only of many medications. So personally, the antibiotic clarithromycin makes me really jittery. But also, anxiety is a really common side effect of, you guessed it, anti-anxiety medications. So given that CBD doesn't appear to produce anxiety in itself, that's also something that strengthens, I think, the comments that maybe mildly anxious patients could look at trying over-the-counter CBD. Given CBD is currently classified as a supplement in the UK, it seems reasonable to compare with other non-prescription medications that people buy over-the-counter or online to help their anxiety. Typical anti-anxiety medications are things like L-theanine or antihistamines. But in both cases, drowsiness is often the intended outcome in terms of why we use it, because that alleviates the symptoms of anxiety. No, I'm not saying that those medications treat anxiety. We're essentially just flattening people with them. Many people find taking medications such as these cause a lot of fatigue and daytime sedation, and that's highly undesirable. And with long-term use, antihistamines can even have a cognitive impairment. Now, in terms of CBD over the counter, it does seem that there is a potential benefit because it has a comparatively much milder side effect profile. Again, there's no anxiety. Yes, fatigue has been reported as have effects on the GI system, but largely CBD doesn't seem to have the same sedating an effect. And I cannot underline this enough, the sedating effect that can happen with, with anxiolytics. I've had patients comparing both over-the-counter and prescription medications as a double-edged sword. Their anxieties improve greatly, but often to the cost of such a degree of functional impairment due to the sedation fatigue, they've had to stop the medications. Now, medically speaking, we appreciate that a common confounding factor with anxiety is poor sleep. Now, if we flip that round, people that have sleep issues also tend to have worse mental health, for example, suffering more depression and anxiety. So why am I seeming to be so massively opposed to antihistamines and other medications that people might use for anxiety that are also used as sleeping medications? Because all sleep is not created equal. 
These sedating medications significantly reduce the quality of sleep. And in many cases, that's going to worsen coexisting mental health issues. The fact that a person has been sedated at the same time means their anxiety is merely less manifest. You've suppressed it rather than treated the problem. And because of how you've changed their sleep cycle, you've potentially started to build up another issue because of poor quality sleep. So that gave me concern about talking about CBD with regard to anxiety and the fatigue that some people have commented on. Does CBD affect the sleep cycle? Well, Frontiers in Pharmacology in 2018 published a randomized control trial, one of the best forms of research you can get, using 300 milligrams of CBD on healthy volunteers. And they didn't find evidence of acute impact of CBD on sleep architecture. Now, it's very important we highlight that these were volunteers, healthy volunteers that had no problems, and that sleep in unaffected patients that didn't have an issue in itself was unaffected. Now, that's interesting because of that comment from patients that CBD could cause some fatigue. Also, because some patients have commented that CBD may improve their sleeping. So clearly we do need to do further research on the endocannabinoid system. But one of the reasons that it's been suggested that we saw no impact on healthy volunteers versus patients commenting when they're using it for a condition such as anxiety, may be that the therapeutic effect of CBD is only manifest in disorders of the endocannabinoid system, for which anxiety may be one. Now, that sounds a bit odd. Let me give you a different example. If there was nothing wrong with you and you took paracetamol, you wouldn't expect to find a pain-killing effect because you didn't have any pain. So it may be the same thing with CBD. If you don't have any issues, you're not going to really notice anything because there's nothing for it to change. But if your endocannabinoid system is out of balance, maybe taking the CBD allows things to settle down. It's definitely an area for more research. So that gives us a different way to look at CBD because when we're looking over the counter anti-anxiety medications, as I've said, they're suppressing the symptoms. But if CBD does have the effect on the endocannabinoid system, it may be that we're actually getting a way of reducing the anxiety more than just providing symptomatic relief. Maybe it's going some way towards helping the anxiety at its core. Now, definitely more research is needed before CBD can be considered safe to use in everyday clinical practice. But there may be a select group of patients who are self-managing their underlying anxiety already who might benefit from a cautious trial of CBD in opposition to more established over-the-counter products such as the antihistamines. I can't underline that enough. I'm not a big fan of those. So maybe trying CBD instead might at least give them health benefits from not using the uh, antihistamines. I really need to stress that a cautious trial needs to be looked at because while CBD does show promise in anxiety management, we've still got many unknowns that must be acknowledged. The first of those is lack of regulation. CBD products aren't uniformly regulated, so we're going to have variations in quality, potency, and potentially even the dose written on the bottle. Sourcing through manufacturers such as NatureCan, whereby doses have been independently verified, is vital. Drug interactions. So CBD can interact with certain medications, especially those that are metabolized through the liver's CYP450 system. So whilst you could certainly buy CBD over the counter, if you're taking any other health-related medications, I would think it would be wise to have a chat with your GP first to ensure there's no risk of an interaction there. And most importantly, issues with limited evidence. As I've been very clear throughout this, all early research suggests potential for CBD and anxiety management. Large, rigorous, double-blind control uh, trials are needed to shore up the evidence base to allow for definitive statements on CBD use cases and doses. And currently, we don't have that. Well, I hope that's been a useful video looking at CBD and anxiety. If it has, please like it and consider subscribing to the channel. That lets you get involved with the communities group where we put updates and helps us essentially plan um, further um, topics that you want to talk about. 
Take care. Thank you for watching this far. Um, look after yourselves and we'll see you in the next one. Cheerio.